Welcome to the return of Office Hours stream. We're going to talk briefly about all these LLMs that are the hot new thing. Chat GPT, GitHub Copilot, Google Bard. What can they do? What can they do to help us code? We're going to learn a lot about that. And then I want to introduce you to a project called Conduit. It's uh, also known as the Real World Project. I'm going to focus on that as my main project here. That's what my goal is to build. And I'm going to build uh, build out an example of that, implementation of that. You'll see what I mean when I get to that. And we're going to use a chat GPT and, and Copilot and Bard to help build that and see how it goes. And then uh, once we cover those things, we're actually going to start coding. Going to start writing some code. Um, do some things we need to do first before we code. We need to get organized a little bit, set up some tasks and project management structure, just as we would in the real world. Uh, maybe get to some CI slash CD slash testing. Um, see how we uh, want to set that up. Maybe GitHub Actions or something along those lines. And then work on the first feature, so we have time for it. Let's get going. So what about this chat GPT stuff? I've got Visual Studio 2022 here. I've got chat GPT here in a web browser window inside Visual Studio. Um, and I've subscribed to chat GPT plus. So something you can do just as a quick example here, we can ask chat GPT to write some code for us. So how about write a fizzbuzz implementation in C sharp and hit the submit on that. And there we go. If you're not familiar with fizzbuzz, what this is, it's like an interview question type of um, uh, coding exercise. Even if they get, get it wrong or make a mistake, that's, that's again, not the point. It's not one of those, whiteboarding exercises where you're expected to come up with a linked tree algorithm uh, or you know what all that kind of stuff so I'll just uh, let me just look at this so this is the whole main so I really don't need the whole thing let's just copy this part here paste it in and what it does is it writes out numbers to the console 1 to 100 it's divisible by 3 it writes out fizz divisible by 5 writes out buzz divisible by 3 and 5 writes out fizz buzz hence the name of the exercise. So there's there's FizzBuzz, and I didn't actually myself write a single line of code. It was all chat GPT. So that's pretty interesting for us. What I think is also interesting is we can also get to read code. What what is what does this code do? And I can just paste it in and submit and it'll tell me. Okay, and right there. Um, now this may be because I had a conversation earlier about FizzBuzz, but it is telling me that this code is the FizzBuzz code and describing what it does. And this, to me, is really a kind of underemphasized in all the hot takes feature of ChatGPT is the ability to read code, understand what it's doing. So that's ChatGPT. There's also another tool called uh, GitHub Copilot. Uh, which you can use like this. I think this will work. Uh, there we go. So I just hit tab. And this is something that GitHub Copilot has written for me. So again, very similar implementation. But this will also work just fine. Output the same thing. Fizzbuzz, Fizzbuzz. Uh, so that's right there in Visual Studio. And there's some cool stuff happening with GitHub Copilot that's going to make it kind of a combination of ChatGPT and, and Copilot, um, GitHub Copilot X. And one thing I'll also notice is that the ChatGPT example was pretty verbose. And this one is a little more, uh, a little more concise, I guess. It's basically the same code, just a slightly different way to, to write it. Uh, for production, I, would, I think I would rather have something like this, uh, something a little easier to scan and read and, and make changes to. But for FizzBuzz, it's totally fine. Let's do I'm going to bring up Google Bard here. Let's see if it'll actually work. Okay, interesting. So I left out one word, in, and it said I can't do that. I added in back in, and now we've got it. So here is the Google Bard implementation of FizzBuzz. Uh, it's looking similar to the ChatGPT, but um, seems a little seems a little bit more verbose. I mean, there's one extra 
else statement in there, I think. But it still works. There we go. Fizzbuzz. So we've got uh, three different tools. Open, or sorry, OpenAI's uh, chat GPT. We've got GitHub Copilot from GitHub and Microsoft. And we've got Bard from Google Bard. We're going to explore uh, all these different tools and see if there's any strengths, weaknesses, compare and contrast as we go. But uh, to do that, uh, it's helpful to build more than just a Fizzbuzz or a Hello World. So that is where this project called um, Real World Example Apps comes into play. And so what this is, it is essentially um, a, a specification for front-end and back-end web applications. And they all follow the same specification. So real world is a little more complex than that. It is a medium.com clone. So if you're familiar with medium.com, it's a, it's a popular blog uh, site. I guess you call it a blog site or uh, you know, kind of a, a social writing site, something like that. So this is Conduit. And here's a demo of it here. You'll see it's very much like Medium. So a lot of blog posts, tags, you can follow, you can leave comments, and uh, so on. And so the idea here is that there's lots of different examples of an implementation of Conduit that are built with a variety of different front-end and back-end technologies. I'm going to be building a uh, Conduit real-world back-end using my choice, uh, of course, ASP.NET, so I'll be using ASP.NET Core with Couchbase. So mine will, mine will be on this list eventually. It'll say ASP.NET Core plus Couchbase. So for every website you want to deploy with Conduit, there's a front end and a back end. So the front end is all like JavaScript or um, maybe Blazor or Wasm, something like that, something browser-based, right, that's going to make calls to the back end. And so hypothetically, let's go back to this page. I could pair up any of these backends with any of these front ends because it follows the same API spec. So if I wanted a halogen front end in pure script, whatever that is, with an ASP.NET ASP.NET Core backend, I could absolutely match those up. There's also some full stack implementations. So these are using, you know, everything front end to back end. This is the full the full enchilada, if you will. I'm going to focus on, on back end mainly, though. I'm not much of a front end developer. There's a lot of documentation and tools to help you do this. So you can, uh, you can of course, just go on your own, right? But you can fork a starter kit, which is what I'll probably be doing. Uh, there's a Postman collection you can use for testing, which I'll probably also be doing. Then there's the endpoints. So this contains all the, uh, the specs for each endpoint. So these are the endpoints that the front ends are all expecting there to be. So you can see a list over here, get current user, update user, get profile, follow user, etc. Those are all there. So if I want to go on to follow user, okay, well this is what the follow user endpoint looks like. It has to be this URL, it's expecting a post, requires authentication, returns a profile, there's more definitions about what that is, and no parameters needed for that. So here's what a profile looks like. So these are all the different uh, business objects that will be working with and returning and passing around. And so that's the project. So okay, so let's get started writing some code. Um, so this is a GitHub project, and I've got this in kind of a Kanban card-based view. So before I do anything there, let's go ahead and go into the, uh, the starter kit. I'm going to go ahead and fork this. So here's, this, here's the starter kit. You can see there's not much in it. It is some, it's a readme mainly, and I meant to actually, you know, start making changes to that readme and have various links, fill in the how it works section, fill in the, how, the getting started section, and so on. So I'll go ahead and fork this. You can see this is a very popular project. Uh, now at the GitHub projects, I can go ahead and start adding items to the project, maybe. Oh, here we go. Start. So I got to add item. Where is it? Add item. And start typing it down here, the name of the item. So let's go back to this and the specs. 
and we got some authentication. So let's make that the first item. So I've kind of combined these two authentication header and authentication into one endpoint. Okay, uh, so now I will add another item. Registration. Registration is going to be just this. Well, let me make that into an issue first. Oh, you know what? The description should be up here. Not a comment. Okay, so there's the code there. And registration. Delete in there. Okay, so you see where this is going. I've got uh, two tasks here in my to-do. We're not going to get to those to all these today. Uh, let's just add one more for the rule of three here. Get current user. You want to just call this endpoint get current user. Convert to issue. This is the kind of tedious uh, project management stuff that you just have to do in a, in a real world anyway. If, if I was just wanting to blast through this project and get an implementation done, I could probably do that pretty quickly. Um, but that wouldn't really be real world, now would it? Okay, so there we go. And there'll be, you know, I'll, I'll go ahead and change this. Uh, oops. Can I change the uh, title? Yeah, so this is going to be endpoints. Registration, and this is going to be authentication and uh, what is it called? And login endpoint. There's really two things here, right? So I have to set up authentication for the whole project, and I have to set up a login endpoint. And this is using a JWT. So that's what does that stand for? Chat GPT. Uh, let's see what it has to say. So that gives me an answer immediately. JSON web token. That's right. There we go. Uh, so the, the problem with this, of course, is that chat GPT can be wrong. Uh, and that fact, it warns you it can be wrong. So I can, just to double check, do a quick search. And there's a Wikipedia article, which Wikipedia can also be wrong, too. But uh, chances are, if this was egregiously wrong, it would have been updated by now. Uh, JWTs are relatively popular. So it is JSON web token, and ChatGPT Chat was right about that. So there we go. That is a JWT. I've never done JWTs before, so that'll be interesting to see how that works. I don't think it's going to be terribly difficult to do. So there, just get the get repo started. And I'm going to create a new project. It's going to be an ASP.NET Core Web API project. I think that makes sense. ASP.NET Core Web App, or no, Core Web API, yes. Okay, and it's going to be called uh, Conduit. Uh, okay, so it's gonna create a project. Okay, I'm gonna call the, the project conduit.web, just in case I create other projects like conduit.test, for instance, eventually. And solution is going to be called Conduit. So that seems fine. Um, I could put it in SRC. All right, I don't know. Is there, a, what do you think? What do Let's you think? see what ChatGPT has to say. Here's a list of potential pros and cons for using an SRC uh -huh. folder. So really, I think it comes down to, in my mind, organization, separating the code from not code is a pro and uh, extra nesting as the main con. So I think what I can do is start without SRC and see how it goes. I can move an SRC later in the worst case. Okay, let's get this started. All right, so there is the project. So in the folder, I've got conduit, and then here's the solution. So we've got uh, web application create builder. Instead of coming off of this, come off a of builder, duck configuration, like so. And this also adds in the environment app settings files, if I plan to use those. And also going to add in environment variables. So if this gets deployed to Azure, which it probably will, I will want to configure some of those things with environment variables. So I'll leave that in there too. 
Uh, everything else here looks fine to me. Um, this actually has a controller already, doesn't it? Yeah, this weather forecast. So let's go ahead and run this and see if it works. Okay, so there's weather forecast. I'll try it out, execute, and there we go. Return some JSON. So that's working, and so is the Swagger portion of it. This is all Swagger, open API, whatever you want to call it. Um, automatically generated, which is very cool. How do I add JW, not JWP, JWT <laughs> to an ASP.NET Core 7 application? So this will be interesting to see how it answers. There is a NuGet package called JWT Bearer that comes from Microsoft. So let's see if that package actually exists because sometimes it has recommended packages to me that do not exist. <laughs> Seems like that's probably something I'll, be have to, I'll have to be using. A very popular package. Here's how I configure it in the startup file. Easy, just copy, paste, add services. I don't know about this issue or signing key. Gotta look into that, what, what these values are supposed to be. Replace with your issuer, replace with your audience. I don't know what those things mean, so I gotta look those up. And then app use authentication. And then you add the authorized attribute to the appropriate controllers. Uh, so what about uh, logging in a user? Valid user's credentials, perform a necessary authentication logic. So this is where I'll look in the database, I assume. See if the user is there. Generate a token and return OK, new token. Replace with your own token generation logic. Method claims symmetric security key. Okay, don't know what that means. Uh, and users and login endpoint validate. Yep, yep. Credential generate. Yep, return token to the client. Yep, that's it. Okay, I'm going to customize the code and replace the placeholder values with your actual values. Okay, interesting. Well, let's just give it a try. Let's see how far we go with this. So here's the token or the uh, NuGet package. And I'm going to go with non-preview release. I'm guessing that stuff is for .NET 8. Now add this to startup CS file. So that's going to be what down, down here. Let me just put some more code in here. App.use authentication. So that will be down. You know, I'll probably put that at the top. Okay, what does valid issuer mean? When it comes to JWT, what value should I use there? First to the expected issuer or issuing authority of the token. It represents the entity or service that issued the token when validating JWT the valid issuer is used to verify that the token's issuer matches the expected value. Does valid issuer need to be a URL? So any value I want to. Okay. Well, I'll just, you know, put something in there. I don't know. Conduit, ASP, net, um, Couchbase. Why not? Okay. Is, can I just make this issuer and make this one audience? Let me okay. go. What should your secret key be? Long, random, and unique string that is known by the issuer and the recipient. It's a shared secret. Okay. So this is where I've got to copy and paste this stuff. So this is a, a good reason probably not to hard code it. Let's make sure it works first. And uh, then I can uh, refactor this. How's that sound? Okay. Yep, I did that. I did that. Whoops, what happened? Did that. Yep. Expiration time, one hour. Mm, let's make it longer. Just so I don't have to worry about it. Okay. 
Okay, so now I need a login view model. So let's go back to see if this works for authentication purposes, I guess. Okay, so I just want an endpoint here that's going to just test to make sure that this works. Uh, I'm just gonna call it route delete me. Okay, so right now, if I run this, let's make sure it compiles. Okay, let's put an okay in there. Uh, I wanna see um, this, this tag here. Okay, so this is kind of expecting pull requests. That's why it's not showing, at least as far as I can tell, it's not showing that uh, association that the issue has with all these, um, You know, adding a commit, for instance, that's not showing up here. So I'm going to go ahead and, and drag this over to done because we've got authentication working. And there we go. Hooray. All right. So we've got the first uh, the first card done. Um, in true project manager fashion, you've got one card done. Well, time to give you uh, two more. <laughs>